So I'm going to do a little tutorial about my Barfield comparator. It's a tester that you use for testing gauges. Uh, basically, it's a, a reservoir and a screw jack with a piston on it, and it puts pressure in that manifold, and you can take a calibrated gauge and put one that's not calibrated on the same line and check to see how accurate it is. So I'm going to use it for a practical purpose here later on. Uh, I'll do it in the same video here. I'm going to adjust the pressure switch for a, uh, a T6 or a Harvard uh, Mark II. It's the low pressure warning. And uh, I've been working on that airplane for a long time now. And, uh, and we, we uh, tested the fuel system first time since like 1950. There's been some fuel in that thing. And uh, it wasn't working right. So I'm going to put it on here and give it a quick test. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you how this works. So I've got a calibrated gauge right here. This one here is calibrated. It's a really good quality Omega gauge, digital. And uh, I checked the calibration of that. That's calibrated August of uh, 2023. I have a deadweight tester up in my shop upstairs. And I did test that. So what you do is you turn this knob here. Actually, you turn the valve first. The valve on the uh, machine uh, directs the flow of the hydraulic oil from the reservoir. So I'm going to turn that valve in, and I'm going to watch the gauges here just to see how accurate this analog gauge is. So as I turn it in, the pressure will increase here. So as you can see on the digital gauge there, there's five pounds and there's five pounds showing on the analog gauge. Uh, there's, there's 10 pounds and 10 pounds. So this analog gauge is pretty accurate. You'd be able to use that to test your uh, oil pressure on an engine. It's up to, it goes up to 100 pounds. So let's just check. We'll get, check a couple of points. Let's check it around 20 PSI and see what it looks like. 19 there's 20 and the analog gauge says 20 as well so let's just go right up to around 50 or something we'll half halfway on the gauge here and see if it stays accurate i'll just look at the analog one here so that's 48 49 51 and the other one says 51 too it's kind of out of focus there a little bit there okay Let's take it up to like 75 and see what happens. So there's 75 on the digital gauge and it's reading about uh, 75 and a half on the analog gauge. So let's just check it at 100 for fun. I'm pretty sure this isn't 100% accurate up at 100. There it's, it kind of stopped there. So this gauge doesn't work good at the top end. It kind of stops at about 96. It doesn't go all the way up there. So you'd be you'd be safe to use this gauge in the mid-range, 70 pounds pressure. What do we got there? 70 and 70, 77, just over 70 and, and 70. At 80 pounds, what do we got at 80? There we are. 80 pounds and it's like 80 one and a half 81 and a half on the uh, analog gauge and 80 on the digital gauge okay so that's how basically how you use this thing you, you can use it you can take the gauge out of your airplane or you can leave the gauges in your airplane and use a calibrated gauge this uh, was used on uh, pt6 uh, torque transmitters they they required uh, i can't remember how often they needed calibration it was a long time ago but uh we used to calibrate the uh the torque uh gauge when they uh when they did hot section inspections i think it was i'm not 100 percent sure or even when the engine got replaced you had to check and make sure that the uh the torque sensor was accurate and this is the way you did it you had a calibrated gauge connected to the unit and then you hooked it up to the transmitter on the airplane to make sure it was transmitting to the uh, digital or the uh, it was an analog gauge back then as well but uh... okay so this is the uh, f low fuel pressure warning switch from a t6 
or a Harvard Mark II. It has a low pressure warning switch that is supposed to turn on about three pounds, two and three quarters to three pounds pressure. The switch is supposed to come on. So I've got my multimeter hooked up to it on the on the buzzer scale and I had to change the gauge I put a little more accurate uh, the analog gauge here is uh, a little easier to read the digital one only reads in one uh, one pound increments so this one's a little more a little easier to read so you can hear it when I when I decrease the pressure see that's at about two and three quarters pounds the buzzer's going and when I increase the pressure slightly it goes off so this thing is adjusted correctly normally the thing's running at five pounds pressure so it's a it's a carbureted engine it runs about five pounds pressure so if the pressure drops down because the pump is failing or it's got a leak or something right around there that light's going to come on on the dash and warn the pilot and uh and the guy in the back seat's going to be working the hand pump to try and keep that pressure up so they can make it home so that's the standby system in a uh, in a Harvard or a T6. There's a hand pump, a wobble pump. So, so this one uh, I don't I didn't have to adjust it. I opened the cover up just to have a look at it to see. I see where the adjustment is. That little red screw there. It says it's got a big sign on it saying that's the adjustment. Pretty well built unit there. I took the cover off. Anyway, so. Uh, I'm going to put it back on the airplane and we'll test it on the airplane. The gauge in the airplane was calibrated uh, before we put it back in. So we know the gauge in the airplane is accurate. We, uh, we filled it up with fuel about a month ago now. And uh, we're going to put the propeller on uh, shortly and uh, it'll be the first run. So I'm going to try and get a videotape of that first run. Anyway, have a great day.